Hello my friends, welcome back. Today we are discussing 10 things to stop doing when you turn 50 or 60 or 70. Hey howdy, hey y'all. If you're new here, my name is Leanna and at almost 60 years old, it is my passion to help you be more confident, find your self-worth, show yourself some self-love. And normally I do that through the magic and power of makeup. But today we're going to discuss the things that we need to stop doing. When I was 49 years old, I was so excited to be on the road to 50. I felt like 50 was going to be a huge turning point in my life and I was not wrong. I never felt like 50 was old. I mean, I thought 50 was old when I was 20, <laughs> but I didn't feel like 50 was old. I felt like it was exciting. To me, after 50 meant I had made it. I was now wiser from all of my life experiences and I could finally relax. And so here I am knocking on the door of 60. That's right, friends, on November the 5th, I will proudly be 60 years old. And while I thought my 50s would be a decade of me, learning who I was as a wise old crone. My 60s should be all about the things that I need to stop doing, right? So let's get into this list of things that we need to stop doing. Number one, stop thinking it's too late. It's never too late to do anything. That old saying that you can do anything you want to do if you put your mind to it is so true. The only thing holding you back from doing anything you want to do is you. You have the ability to do anything you want to do in your life or make any changes that you feel necessary in your life all the way up until you take your very last breath. Number two, stop rejecting yourself. We will often reject ourselves in order to avoid being rejected by others. Rejecting yourself is prioritizing the opinions of others over your own, avoiding opportunities out of fear of failure. Self-rejection can lead to people-pleasing. Just like during a flight where you have to put the oxygen on yourself first before you can help someone else, you need to make yourself happy first. Choose you. Number three, stop living in your comfort zone unless you are truly happy there. People will often stay in their comfort zone to avoid anxiety, stress, and pain, and also to avoid failure. It is where people feel at ease. And in my opinion, your comfort zone is boring. Step out of your comfort zone and experience new things. Let go of control and embrace excitement and the unknown. Do you believe in magic or miracles? Those things exist outside of your comfort zone. Number four, stop sabotaging yourself by letting other people tell you how to live. Be assertive in your choices. Listen to your own needs and desires. Prioritize your own internal compass and walk a path of your own choosing and not one that was mapped out by others. Number five, stop doubting your inner voice. Turn down the volume of others so that you can actually hear your inner wisdom. Do you know how to recognize it? Do you know what your inner voice is? It is the voice in your head that is a stream of thoughts 
feelings and self-conversations, such as self-reflection, problem-solving, planning, and decision-making. Your inner wisdom or your intuition will never steer you wrong, but you need to be still and hear it. The next five things that we need to stop doing are always a constant in my social media feeds. I have to be honest. I find them quite frustrating. Number six, stop letting someone dictate to you how you should or should not wear your hair. At one point in my life, I was told that I could not dye my hair purple, that if I did, that I would lose my job. Well, my hair is purple, and this year is the 10th year that I have been at that same job. I decided that a job would not decide for me what color my hair would be. Did you know that the advice from all of the hair experts will tell you not to wear your hair long and all one length if you're a mature person? They suggest that you cut your hair in a style that will hide certain features that are unappealing. I say embrace all your features and love them. I am done hiding things. Number seven, stop listening to all of the experts tell you how to dress. Stop wearing this, it makes you look frumpy. Don't wear that shirt. It looks too boxy. Don't wear half quarter sleeves. Don't wear white after whatever holiday it is. Don't wear, for heaven's sake, don't wear a bikini over 50. Hell, don't wear a bikini over 30. Don't wear bold colors. Stop this, stop doing that. Do you want to wear a bikini? Then wear a bikini. If you're 20, if you're 40, if you're 90, if you want to wear a bikini, wear the bikini. Do you want to wear baggy clothes? Wear baggy clothes if that's what makes you feel comfortable. Wear what you want to wear. And if it makes other people uncomfortable, good. Number eight, stop letting beauty gurus tell you to update your makeup look from the 1980s or that you shouldn't wear bold lipstick or red lipstick. You know, my grandmother wore red lipstick. It was the only shade of lipstick she wore and it was the only makeup that she wore. She never left the house without her red lipstick. And she was 60, 70, 80 years old. Don't wear shimmers or bright colors. Do you like your thin brows? Then keep your thin brows. Do you love the makeup application method that you use, that you've been using since you were 16? Then continue to do that. Wear your bold colors. Wear your shimmers. Or wear no makeup at all. Number nine, stop comparing yourself to others. Comparison truly is the thief of joy. Don't compare your clothes. Don't compare your house. Don't compare your lifestyle. Don't compare any of these things. Build your life and your style in a way that makes you happy. Remember, not everything you see on social media is real. People like to make you think that everything in their world is perfect, but it is not. Set a goal for where you want to be in your life. Chart your progress. That should be your only comparison. And finally, number 10, stop judging people who are different from you. In my humble opinion, the best way for us to fully accept ourselves is by accepting those who are different from us. I would imagine that this would go without saying, 
But I'm not talking about accepting other people's bad habits or their anger or abuse. I'm talking about the things about them that are different, their beliefs, such as religion or politics, who they choose to love, how they dress, what color their hair is, if their face is completely covered in tattoos, if they have a lot of piercings on their face. All of those things do not give you any indication of their heart. It is true that you cannot judge a book by its cover. The point is, be who and how you wish to be. Don't let other people dictate to you what you should or should not do. Love yourself exactly for who you are. Accept that we are all beautifully imperfect and that our imperfections are what make us special and unique. Sometimes it's not always about our achievements, but what we let go of. And as an aside, you don't have to listen to me either. Okay. Love you, bye.